What's up guys and welcome to another Archetype episode. This week we're doing the Neo Spatian Archetype. So the Neo Spatians is an archetype related to the elemental heroes. The Neo Spatians focus upon a new unusual form of fusion summoning with elemental hero Neos. This fusion summoning is called Contact Fusion. They were introduced by Jaden Yuki in the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX anime, who had created the concept of these cards when he was younger. So how about we get started? First up, Elemental Hero Neos. His description reads, a new elemental hero has arrived from Neo Space. When he initiates a contact fusion with a Neo Spatian, his unknown powers are unleashed. Now, fun fact, we already have a whole episode on this card, so if you would like to learn more about him, then head over to the link in the description and then just come back to this video or just look for it afterwards. Or you could just search for Elemental Hero Neos Trivia. Up to you. Next up, Elemental Hero Neos Alias. This is a younger counterpart of Elemental Hero Neos. This monster, as well as Elemental Hero Neos and Neos Space Pathfinder, most likely are based from the Ultraman series, or possibly the Gyver series. This card was the first Gemini monster to be part of an archetype, and the word Alias in this card's name means in Latin, another. Knowing that, this guy's full name, Neos Alias, could mean another new in Greek and Latin combined. And fun fact, this monster is the only elemental hero whose anime manga debut was not in the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX related material. Next up, Neo Space Pathfinder. So Neo Space appears in the background of this card's artwork and is drawn in a manner resembling a Hoag's object, which is basically a special ring type galaxy. This card is also the only field searcher that can retrieve its corresponding field spell card from the graveyard. And this card could be considered a Neos counterpart to Dark Magician Girl, as it is a female counterpart to a signature card, Elemental Hero Neos, similarly to how Dark Magician Girl is a female counterpart to Dark Magician. Now then, onto the Neospatians. First up, Neospatian Air Hummingbird. Its effect is, once per turn, you can gain 500 life points for each card in your opponent's hand. This card's chrysalis form is Chrysalis Chicky. While it's much more visible in the anime, if you look closely at this monster's belt, you can see the initials NS, which most likely stand for Neospatian. In the dub version of GX during episode 113, Neospatian Air Hummingbird acted like Maxwell Smart. His attack name in the original version is Hovering Peck, while in the dub it is Slaughtering Swoop. And his effect name in the dub is Honey Suck. Mm, okay. This monster appears in the artworks of Nex, Contact Out, and Future Vision. Next up, Neo Spatian Aqua Dolphin. Its effect is once per turn, you can discard one card, look at your opponent's hand, and choose one monster card in it. If you control a monster with attack greater than or equal to the attack of the chosen card, destroy the chosen card and inflict 500 damage to your opponent. Otherwise, take 500 damage. So, the Chrysalis form of this card is Chrysalis Dolphin, and this monster appears in the artworks of Nex. Cross Change, End Shuffle, Neo Space Wave, Contact Out, and Future Vision. Among the Neo Spatians, Aqua Dolphin has had all the first appearances of all three of the evolutions of the Neo Spatians. For example, he was the first to appear in the anime, his Chrysalis Dolphin form was the first Chrysalis monster to be released, and Neo Spatian Marine Dolphin was the first evolved Neo Spatian to be released as well. Funnily enough, this is the only Neo Spatian whose type actually changed since its Chrysalis state. So he basically went from a fish to a warrior. Speaking of upgrades, his upgraded form is Neospatian Marine Dolphin, and this card is exactly 300 attack and defense more than the monster required to summon it. Fun fact. Next up, Neospatian Dark Panther. Once per turn, you can target one face-up monster your opponent controls until the end phase. While you control this face-up card, this card's name and effects become those of the target monster. This card's Chrysalis form is Chrysalis Pantail, and the monster appears in Contact Out and Next. The monster's collar says NS, which most likely stands for Neospatian. This is also the strongest of the Neospatian monsters in terms of original attack. In the English version of the anime, Dark Panther speaks with the voice of 
an impersonation of a jazz musician. Next up, Neospatian Flare Scarab. This card gains 400 attack for each spell or trap card your opponent controls. And this card's chrysalis form is Chrysalis Lava. This monster is based on the Scarab, and this monster appears in the artworks of Contact Out, Next, Future Vision, and this actual card appears in the artwork of Convert Contact. Now, this monster could be a reference to the Underground Empire in Brave Police J. Decker, which was a parallel species of humans that evolved from insects instead of apes. Next up, Neospatian Glomoss. When this card attacks or is attacked, your opponent draws one card. Reveal it and based on its type, apply this effect. Monster, end the battle phase. Spell, if this card is attacking, you can change it to a direct attack instead. Trap, change this card to defense position. This card's chrysalis form is Chrysalis Pinny, and the monster appears in Neospace Wave, Future Vision, Contact Out, and Next. Although this monster appears mostly androgynous, the female figure of Neospatian Twinkle Moss suggests this monster could also be female as well. This card has the lowest attack of all Neospatian monsters, and this is the only Neospatian monster with no higher rarity than a common. In the anime, this card's attack is called Spore Spear, and its effect is called Signal Check. As well, in the anime, this card had the following additional effect. If your opponent chooses not to draw a card due to this card's effect, you must discard the top two cards of your deck to the graveyard. This card has an extended form known as Neospatian Twinkle Moss, which is the strongest of the Neospatians in terms of defense, alongside Neospatian Marine Dolphin. It's also the only plant-type fusion monster in the TCG so far. And finally, this is the only Neospatian that does not have an individual fusion with elemental hero Neos. Next up, Neospatian Grand Mole. At the start of the damage step, this card battles an opponent's monster. You can return the opponent's monster and this card to the hand. So this card's chrysalis form is Chrysalis Mole. The monster appears in Future Vision and Contact Out. Its attack name in the original anime is Drill Mole. And finally, there is a support monster called Cross Porter. Now then, let's move on to the fusions. First up, Elemental Hero, Air Neos. This card is made up of Neos and Air Hummingbird. This card is the cover card of Strike of Neos, and it is featured in the artwork of Dimensional Explosion. Out of the six original Neos Contact Fusion monsters that only use one Neospatian, this is the only one not to debut in Season 2 of Yu-Gi-Oh! Instead, it first appeared in Episode 107, the third episode of Season 3 in Jaden's duel against Jesse Anderson. This is the only Neos Fusion monster that was not actually reprinted in Legendary Collection 2. Next up, Elemental Hero Aqua Neos. This card is made up of Neos and Aqua Dolphin. So this card has a stronger version called Elemental Hero Marine Neos. And this is one of the few cards that actually destroys a card from the opponent's hand. Next up, Elemental Hero Chaos Neos. This card is made up of Neos, Dark Panther, and Glomos. This card is the cover card for Gladiator's Assault, and this card is named Chaos Neos because it's a fusion of a light monster and a dark monster. Among the triple contact fusions, Chaos Neos is unique in that it doesn't remove all of the cards on the field when it leaves. Unlike Elemental Hero Magma Neos and Storm Neos, this card's effect is altered from the anime when it was released in the TCG and OCG. As well, this card along with Rainbow Dragon, Honest and you belt the ultimate nightmare are the only cover cards to be released as secret rare cards in a booster pack. Also, this card is the only elemental hero to be printed as a ghost rare. Funnily enough, some prints of the unlimited edition of the ghost rare version of Rainbow Dragon were misprinted with a picture of this card. And some prints of the first edition ghost rare version of this card were misprinted with the name Rainbow Dragon. That's crazy! Due to an error, this card's effect appears in place of Rainstorm's card text in the video games World Championship 2008, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Tag Force, and Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Tag Force 2. The attack name in the original is Aura Dark Spiral and Chaos Fury Flash in the English dub. Next up, Elemental Hero Dark Neos. This card is made of Neos and Dark Panther. This card is the cover card of Power of the Duelist and Duelist Pack Jaden Yuki 2. This card's effect is the exact opposite of that of Neos 
Neospatian Dark Panther. So this monster bears resemblance to elemental hero Air Neos. And in the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Tag Force, this is the only Neos fusion monster that cannot be obtained from a booster pack in the game. Rather, it can only be obtained from using the card converter in the lab and convert 99 cards with it. This card's attack name in the Japanese anime is Wrath of Black Neos. Next up, elemental hero Flare Neos. Made up of Neos and Flare Scarab, this card is a superior version of Neospatian Flare Scarab, hence their effects. Among Jaden's Neos fusion monsters, this one appeared the most, being used a total of 7 times throughout Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. This card is first summoned in episode 68 and is last summoned in episode 168, exactly 100 episodes later. And finally this card's attack name is Flare Finale in the dub and Burn to Ashes in the original. Next up, Elemental Hero Glow Neos. Made up of Neos and Glow Moss, Elemental Hero Glow Neos is the only fusion form of Neos that has ever talked in the series. This card's attack name is Lightning Strike in both versions of the anime and its effect name is Signal Buster blue lightning in the original. Next up, elemental hero Grand Neos. This card is made of Neos and Grand Mole. This card is based on Shin Geta 2 from Shin Geta Robo. And its effect name in the Japanese version is Nebulous Hole and its attack name is Nebula Shot. Next up, elemental hero Magma Neos. This card is made of Neos, Flare Scarab and Grand Mole. This is the only fusion form of Neos that has ever been put in any Yu-Gi-Oh! NDS game until over the Nexus. By its effect alone, you can get this card's attack to 13,400 if all of the zones, including the field zone and both players' pendulum zones, are filled. If the field spell Molten Destruction is included, this card's attack would even be further raised to 13,400. 1900 instead. This is the only triple contact fusion Neos card to appear in more than one episode. And this along with Elemental Hero Storm Neos and Chaos Neos have the highest attack of all Elemental Heroes. Coincidentally, these three cards are triple contact fusion Neoses. This card's effect is an upgraded version of Elemental Hero Flare Neos and Elemental Hero Grand Neos's effects. And this card's fusion material monsters are the two things that can create magma earth and fire. Its attack name is Super Heat Meteor in the Japanese and Meteor Meltdown in the English. Next up, Elemental Hero Marine Neos. This card is made of Neos and Marine Dolphin. Improvements over Elemental Hero Aqua Neos are, it has 300 more attack and defense, you don't have to pay to activate its effect, and it doesn't need Neo space to stay on the field. This is one of the few cards that can destroy a card from your opponent's hand as well, and this is the only level 8 Neos fusion monster. Next up, Elemental Hero Storm Neos. Made up of Neos, Hummingbird and Aqua Dolphin, this monster's claws somewhat resemble those of Wolverine from X-Men. This monster also bears a slight resemblance to Cygnus Wing from the Mega Man Star Force franchise. This monster's effect is very similar to that of Heavy Storm, and this card's fusion materials are the three things that make up a storm. Wind, water and light, with Neos kind of representing lightning. When summoning this, Jaden calls this card the strongest of the Neos fusions. As well, it was the only one that Jaden used a summon chant to summon, and this card's effect was called Ultimate Typhoon in the Japanese version. Next up, Elemental Hero Divine Neos. This card must be fusion summoned using 5 Neos, Neos Space, Neos Spatian or Hero Monsters, including at least 1 Neos or Neos Space Monster, one Neospatian monster and one hero monster and cannot be special summoned by other ways. Once per turn, you can banish one Neos, Neospace, Neospatian or hero monster from your graveyard. This card gains farmage attack and until the end phase, it also gains the banished monster's effect. <gasps> That's a long effect. This card is the highest level of any warrior type monster. And in the anime, this card's attack was 3000, whereas it was changed to 2500 in the OCG and TCG. This card is notable for having as much or more required fusion material monsters than any other fusion card in the game that have a set number of fusion materials. Although it ties with 5-headed dragon and could be outmatched by Chimera Tech over dragon using its OTK strategy. This card's effect is similar to that of Phantom of Chaos. 
Elemental hero Neos is often described as having his true power unlocked by fusion. This could mean that this card is the true power dwelling within Neos. This is further reinforced in the anime by the fact that this card is created by the contact fusion of Neos and all six Neospatians. Along with this card being the final form of elemental hero Neos, Sorcerer of Dark Magic is the final form of Dark Magician, Shooting Quasar Dragon is the final form of Stardust Dragon, and number 39 Utopia Beyond is the final form of number 39 Utopia. Almost all of them are used by main series protagonist against the final antagonist of their series. And this card's attack name is Legendary Strike. Next up, Elemental Hero Neos Knight. Made up of Neos and one warrior type monster, this card has some similar traits to Dark Magician Knight. This is a warrior type equivalent to Dragon Knight Draco Equisite, which requires one dragon type synchro monster and one warrior type monster. It is also the warrior type equivalent of UFO Roid Fighter, which requires one UFO Roid and one warrior type monster. This monster kind of looks like a fusion between Elemental Hero Neos and Blackluster Soldier. In the Japanese version of the movie, this card's attack name is Rap of Neos Slash. Next up, Neos Wise Man. Made up of Ubel and Neos, both of these monsters appear in the background of this card's artwork. This monster seems to represent Jaden after he fused with Ubel because this card is the combination of Neos, which represents Jaden, and Ubel, as of the last episode, his two ace cards. In the anime, when Jaden used Super Polymerization, he discards Wing Karibo to summon this card, so this card could be technically a fusion of all of Jaden's spirit monsters. And if you want to go even a little bit further, this card's effect is very similar to that of Flame Wingman, Jaden's other favourite monster, and kind of his original signature card. And this card's attack name was Ultimate Nova. Next up, Rainbow Neos. Made up of Elemental Hero Neos, Rainbow Dragon, or Dark Rainbow Dragon, this card is the strongest warrior type monster in the TCG and OCG. This card is the first card that is a ghost rare that isn't a cover card for a booster. The second is Star Eater. This card is one of the six which had the highest rarity drops possible. Originally a ghost rare, it is now a common. This card's attack rivals that of Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, Neo Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, Neo Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon, number C107 Neo Galaxy Eyes Tachyon Dragon, Crimson Nova Trinity The Dark Cubic Lord, number 22 Zombenstein, which all tied together for the third highest fixed attack in the OCG and TCG. Much like Neos Wise Man symbolising Jane and Yuki's bond with you, Bell, this card may symbolise the friendship with Jesse Anderson. Therefore, this card is called Protector of Bonds. And finally, this episode's gone long enough, so let's just list out some of the uh, support cards. We have Cocoon Party, Cocoon Rebirth, Cocoon Veil, Common Soul, Convert Contact, Get Your Game On, Nex, Space Gift, Contact Out, Instant Neo Space, and Neo Space. And with that, guys, that's another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Trivia done. This was a long episode, so smash that like button. Can we get over 100 likes? I'd appreciate that so much. I'm going to say thanks a lot for watching, guys. Catch you later.